Hello, my friends. This is Pastor Christopher Alam. I trust you and your household are doing well and are blessed today. Now, we have been talking about the gifts and the, I mean, the person and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And uh, yesterday I gave you the three categories of gifts that, the, that uh, 1 Corinthians 12 talks about the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. And we have divided those nine gifts of the Holy Spirit into categories of three gifts. The first category is the utterance gifts. These are gifts that say something. The second uh, category are the, are the revelation gifts or the revelatory gifts. These are gifts that reveal something. And the third category are the power gifts. These are gifts that do something. And uh, But anyway, before we go into that, we, today we'll talk about the first of the utterance gifts. That's the gift of speaking in diverse kinds of tongues. And but uh, before that, I'll, you know, I'll share a little testimony with you like I've always done every day. And this is from Zimbabwe. Years ago, I was in the town of Bulawayo holding a crusade. And one evening, a well-dressed gentleman in a nice suit, he and his wife came up to me and they greeted me. And he began to share his testimony. He said, Pastor, I want to tell you what the Lord has done for me. I said, please go on. He says, you, you don't know me, but many, many years ago, I was a guy on the streets. I was without work. My wife and I lived in a little shack. I was a, I was a drunk and uh, we somehow we used to subsist and survive, uh, survive. We have six kids and our life was miserable. But one day I saw the lights, you know, I heard the sound from your crusade. So I went to the crusade and I was drunk and I, I heard what you were preaching and I was really touched. He said, I came back the next night and uh, I gave my life to Jesus. When I gave my life to Jesus, I immediately sobered up. And then you talked about how important it is for me to join a local church. So I came and told my wife and uh, I took my wife to the crusade the next day and we got saved and we decided we, we, we really want to get serious with God and we want to walk with Jesus because we needed a life change. So he said, we went to church. We began, we were faithful in church. We grew in God's grace. Then the pastor, our pastor saw the hand of God over my life and, and he entrusted me to pastor another church, one of their branch churches. So I did that. This took, of course, several years. And and he says, over the years, I planted several churches and now God has really blessed us. And uh, we have six kids, our six kids, they've all been to university. We have put all of them to university. One is a captain in the airlines and the other is uh, teaching at the university. I mean, just a wonderful, wonderful story. And, you know, I was so thrilled to hear this because it's, it's not just a question of salvation in the sense that your sins are forgiven and you go to heaven. And that is great. That is of course, from the point of eternity, uh, viewpoint of eternity, that is the only thing that comes. But you think of this, that salvation, receiving Jesus, is not just uh, having an assurance of heaven, but it's an assurance of having a life change here, that God changes your life and your circumstances for the better here, and he puts his hand upon you and blesses you and blesses your family. So I just wanted to share this story with you. I've heard of, I've heard many, many such stories over the years, but this was one that just came to mind as I sat down to record this. So I'm sharing this with you. Anyway, so before we go into the gifts of the Holy Spirit, uh, I would just like to you to understand one thing that to flow in the gifts of the Holy Spirit means hearing from God because the gifts are of the Holy Spirit. It's not, you don't make this stuff up. It is the Holy Spirit. So you actually, to walk with the Holy Spirit and to hear from him and to know his guiding, his leading, his voice, it has to do with God, between God and man. So in order to flow in the Holy Spirit and to be, to hear from him, there are three things that are important. And the first thing is have a clean and pure walk with God and maintain a clear conscience. Number one, have a clean and pure walk with God. Keep your heart and your motives clean. Now, of course, you will never be perfect on this earth. I'm not perfect. Nobody is. But if you ever stumble and falter, be quick to repent and quick to make things right and always do the right thing. Never take any shortcuts, but do the right thing. You know what the Bible says? Do the right thing, even if the right thing is the difficult thing. And uh, because God looks at the direction of your life rather than your mistakes. Remember that. So maintain that good flow in life and keep a clear conscience. That's the first thing. The second thing is have an uncluttered mind. And by that, I mean 
is that, you know, I mean, in my years, I've been in the ministry for 44 years, and today our minds are bombarded with far more junk and garbage than there were 30 and 40 years ago. We have the internet, we have channel, TV channels with 300, uh, TV, uh, sorry, TV sets with 350 channels, and there's so much information that bombards our minds continually, and God is also trying to speak to us, and very often God speaks in a still small voice and his voice doesn't get through. And so uh, because of all this other clutter, all these other signals going through our mind. So learn to unclutter your mind. Be, be selective about what you watch on TV, what you read. Try to tone things down in your life. You don't have to sit four hours before the TV every day, watch every sports event, watch all the garbage, watch wrestling. You, you don't have to do that. Get rid of things because the Bible uh, tells us in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 that when in running the race it says they have two things we have to throw off. Firstly we have to throw off the sin that easily besets us and that we are all clear over and get rid of sin but also the weights that come to cling to us and the weights are things that are not necessarily sinful but hinder our walk. Uh, you know when a runner is running a race he doesn't run a race carrying a, a backpack full of bricks. So there can be things in your life that, that just take too much of your energy, of your attention, of your time, and that consume you. And it's time to get rid of them if you're serious with God and serious about walking with Him. So get rid of those things which are not necessarily sinful, but that which will hinder your walk. The third thing is to pray much in the Holy Spirit. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Now, I tell you why. Because you see what happens is when you pray in the Spirit, it, it, it does something to you. What it does is that it desensitizes your flesh, your emotion, your mind, and it sensitizes your spirit man. Uh, normally there's so much going on in our minds all the time that we cannot hear the still small voice speaking to our spirit. So the more you speak in tongues, the more sensitive your spirit becomes to the Holy Spirit and it kind of deadens or numbs your, your flesh in, in that sense that it desensitizes your flesh and it sensitizes your spirit, makes it easier for you to hear from God. So these three things you have to do, maintain a clean walk and a clean conscience. Secondly, have an uncluttered mind and thirdly, pray much in the Holy Spirit. Now, some people say, yeah, but we know uh, people, who, you know, famous, some famous preachers who see miracles, but they are ungodly. They love money. They don't uh, treat people well. And we, we see them and, you know, their character isn't the way it should be. Well, let, let me just say this because you are wondering how can God use such people? Well, firstly, God you doesn't use them because of them. Uh, many times what happens is that God uses such people, not because of them, but because of the people whose needs are so great. And God hears the cry of people's heart uh, that he will use anybody who makes himself available, even if he is flawed. But that doesn't, that never excuses the sins or the flaws in that person. Now, he's making a great mistake if he thinks that, well, God uses me in spite of the way I am, so I, I guess God thinks my behavior is okay. It is not okay, that's the first thing. The second thing to remember that many times these people, what we think is the Holy Spirit is not uh, the Holy Spirit, it's a familiar spirit or a counterfeit spirit. A counterfeit, fit, a counterfeit spirit can imitate some of the manifestations of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, get me this, get this please. A counterfeit spirit to a certain extent can, can uh, imitate the manifestations of the gifts of the Spirit, but they cannot uh, imitate the fruit of the Spirit because the gifts of the Spirit reflect the power of Jesus Christ but the fruit of the Spirit reflect the character of Jesus Christ. So I always tell people that, listen, one of the things you should do uh, if you want to learn the ways of the Spirit, the, learn, the ways of the Holy Ghost, to learn to flow in the gifts of the Spirit, is to follow a man of God. But when you follow somebody, watch his character rather than his gifting. Don't follow somebody who is all character and has no gifting. There are plenty of those around. And, and neither do you follow somebody who is all gifting and no character, but follow someone 
who you in whom you see the power of God, but you also see the love and the compassion and the character of Jesus Christ. So look for these things. Firstly, first comes, <coughs> sorry, first comes, comes character and then comes power. So remember this. And uh, anyway, now let's go to the first of the uh, of the utterance gifts of the spirit. And the first one is, is the gift of speaking in diverse kinds of tongues. Now, let me just say this, and, and that is that this, the speaking in other tongues is actually a very versatile kind of gifts. It's actually a lot of different things. And I want to clarify some of these things to you from the scripture, because most people don't understand the differences between these different uh, kinds of tongues. Let me put it this way. The first, first thing is that the gift of speaking in diverse kinds of tongues is not the same thing as the speaking of other tongues, which is the initial outward evidence of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Let me repeat this again. Let's put it in reverse. When you got baptized with the Holy Spirit, you, we, you spoke with other tongues. That, those tongues are not the gift of speaking in diverse kinds of tongues in in uh, uh, first Corinthians chapter 12. Now, of course, the first tongue is also a gift from God in the, in the, in the sense that everything is a gift from God. And you when you, uh, you know, you got baptized with the Holy Spirit, God gave you the ability, the spirit gave you the utterance, he spoke in tongues. But strictly speaking, that is not the gift of speaking in diverse kinds of tongues that is mentioned in the list of the gifts of the Holy Spirit in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Let me explain to you. I, let, let me explain further. Secondly, there are many types and kinds of tongues. Firstly, tongues which are the initial outward evidence of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. When you got baptized in the Holy Spirit, you spoke in other tongues. That's the initial outward evidence of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And that is for everybody. If they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spoke with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. That is for everybody. Secondly, tongues, the second kind of tongues are tongues for personal edification and devotion and worship. Right? Say, for example, I speak in tongues to worship God. You know, I, there are tongues. You 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 go into speaking in tongues to worship God, to praise God, or uh, uh, you uh, you speak in tongues for personal edification. And I'll share the scriptures about you. You speak in tongues, like when I'm driving my car, I'll be going shikaraba shandaraba koriya dhanama kandiriya or robotana kasa under the shower in the bed. I'll wake up in the morning kiraba sunde keta kepa. Now that is my personal devotion, personal edification. Speaking in tongues for those things. That's the, uh, and worship, you know, worshiping God in other tongues. Now, that's the second kind of speaking in tongues. The third kind of tongues is the gift of uh, diverse kinds of tongues in ministry. That is not for everybody. And how do I say that? Well, look at the scripture, 1 Corinthians 12, verses 22, 28 to 30. It says, and this is actually a list of, these are not gifts in the sense, but these are people who are ministering in the church. These are ministry. There's a combination of gifts of the Holy Spirit and ministry gifts and other things. It's interesting. It says 1 Corinthians 12, 28 to 30. And God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondly prophets, prophets, third teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Are all apostles? He means no. Are all prophets? No. Are all teachers? No. Are all workers of miracles? No. Have all gifts of healings? No. No. Everyone can pray for the sake, but that doesn't mean everyone has a gift of healing. Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? So here he's talking about the ministry of the, uh, uh, you know, of the uh, diverse kinds of tongues. Uh, spoken in church, which shall be interpreted. So I can, I have, you know, I, I, I spoke in tongues when I was baptized with the Holy Spirit and I pray in other tongues in worship and adoration and self-edification. But it's another thing to have 
the gift of the diverse kinds of tongues when I speak in tongues as a message to the body and such tongues should be interpreted. That is not for everybody. Everybody doesn't have it. Some people have it. That's why you go to churches, some churches that are open to the gift. You will see that some people have that gifting. They'll get up on Sunday morning. They'll give a message in tongues and someone else will get up and interpret it. Now that is a gift. But everybody does not have that gift. Are you are you with me? This is so. These are the three different categories of tongues. Now, miscellaneous truths to be aware of. These are certain things the Bible says about tongues. First Corinthians 13 verse 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels. That means that there are tongues that are the tongues of men. Like I said to you yesterday or actually two days ago, I spoke in tongues in Serbo-Croatian. I spoke in tongues in Finnish. I spoke in tongues in Swahili. And I have friends who have spoken in tongues in different, many different languages. And those are the tongues of men. That means the Serbo-Croatian. Uh, I don't know Serbo-Croatian, but when I spoke in Serbo-Croatian, I, I don't know Swahili, but when I spoke in Swahili, there was somebody, somebody else there or some people there who understood me. So that's it. Those are tongues of men and God supernaturally can give you utterance in the tongues of men. On the day of Pentecost, there were 18 different languages at least that were being spoken and those were the tongues of men because they're, they were native people from those places who heard those languages and they, and they heard them. Now, then there's tongues of angels. Tongues of angels are languages that are not spoken on earth, but they are languages spoken by by, by angelic beings. Angels speak those languages. And when you're speaking in tongues of angels, no human being can understand you. So there are tongues of men and tongues of angels. Then I want to read to you 1 Corinthians 14 verse 4. It said, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifies himself. That means when you spoke, speak in other tongues, you build yourself up. It's a great way of building yourself up in your spiritual man by speaking in other tongues. Just speak, pray in other tongues. And, uh, you know, whenever I'm alone, I'm somewhere, you'll see my lips moving. You'll see I'm driving or I'm alone. I'm doing something. I'll be speaking in tongues. So speak in tongues, you build yourself up. Jude one twenty. it says, But ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, Praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Ghost is also praying in tongues. So when you pray in the Holy Ghost, you build yourself up. And uh, the Bible tells us, exhorts us to build yourself up by praying in the Holy Ghost. In fact, the more you pray in tongues, the more you build yourself up. Romans 8, 26. It says, likewise, the spirit also helpeth us in our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray as we ought, but the spirit himself uh, maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So it means when we enter into, into intercession and into prayer and we don't know how to pray, then the Holy Spirit comes and come, takes hold of uh, alongside us with groanings. And groanings is actually a deeper kind of tongues. That is, it's actually more than tongues, but it's also in the spirit. You, you groan and you, you know, that, that thing works in you. It's a deep kind of utterance in tongues, but it comes through as groanings. Now, in, these are just uh, miscellaneous scriptures on which will help us understand more about the diversities when it comes to tongues. Uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 14 and 15. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. So when you pray in, under, in, in an unknown tongue, what happens? Your spirit is praying, but your mind doesn't understand anything. Like when I pray in English, uh, I pray. I usually pray in Swedish and I pray in English. So when I pray in English, I pray in Swedish. My mind is with me. I understand everything. But when I pray in tongues, I don't understand. I just pray. And not often what happens, I begin to pray in English and Swedish. And when I, when I uh, run out of things to pray for, but I feel in my spirit, there's still other things to pray for, but I don't know what they are. So I switch gears into tongues and I pray in tongues. I just go on in tongues because that's when my spirit man takes over. And together with the Holy Spirit, he takes hold of those things. And I'm praying for those things in the spirit that my mind can't understand. And then in verse 15, in 1 Corinthians 14, Paul says, I will pray the spirit. I will pray with the understanding. That means I'll pray in tongues. I will pray with my understanding, with my mind. 
Then he says, I will sing with the spirit and I will sing with the understanding. Singing, you know, oh my goodness, years ago, I'm talking about 30, 35 years ago, we used to sing in the spirit a lot. You don't hear much of that anymore in the churches. But Paul says, like, just like we sing with the understanding, we sing songs with in English, we will also sing in the spirit. You know, we sometimes the Holy Ghost moves and we would just burst into song in the spirit. We would just sing in the spirit and we would just, and it's one of the most beautiful things ever. So what he's talking about, I will pray in the spirit. I will also pray in the, with the understanding. I will sing with the spirit. I'll sing with the understanding. Now with that background, let's now go to tongues and ministry. Uh, tongues and tongue, they, that means the gift of diverse kind of tongues. And that is tongues, which are actually the purpose is to convey a teaching or a message from God. Though that is incomplete without interpretation because I could be in a meeting and I have a message say for you who are listening to me right now and I'm in a meeting and 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 I look at you and I go she it means nothing to you unless there's somebody who has the gift of interpreting that who interprets and say thus says the Lord and the Lord is saying this that and the other so that kind of tongue is not merely praying in tongues for my edification or to worship God but that that kind of tongue is tongues in ministry that is carrying a message for an individual or sometimes for the whole church. Now that kind of tongue must have an interpretation unless the only exception is if I say give a message that is unknown to the entire congregation but maybe it is in Bulgarian or Hungarian or Russian and there is somebody in that building at that moment who is a, a believer or an unbeliever and and he needs and that is in his native language he said he's from overseas he grew up in Bulgaria and he's sitting in church and he needs to hear from God and suddenly this guy just stands up and begins to speak in Bulgarian and nobody else understands there's no interpreter to interpret that but that message that message is not for the congregation it is for that brother or sister from Bulgaria who's there so those are the that is the one case in which a message in tongues does not need to be interpreted because it's not intended for the entire congregation or for a local person you know but it is for somebody who speaks that language so in first Corinthians 14 verses 1 and 5 it says, follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. For he that prophesies speaketh unto men, unto edification and exhortation and comfort. Anyway, but let's do this. We will continue uh, the rest about speaking in tongues tomorrow because I've got quite a lot more in my notes and I must stop here because I don't want to go over 24, 25 minutes. So if you will uh, forgive me, but please stay with me tomorrow. I'll carry on with this, but let's have a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my brothers and sisters. I thank you for your hand upon their lives. I thank you, Father, for what you are doing in our lives. Father, I pray for health and healing and life and blessing and wholeness in their homes and their families. In the name of Jesus, I curse every disease, every sickness. In the name of Jesus, I speak life and health to you in Jesus' name. Father, I ask you that each one of my brothers and sisters who hears my voice, may they grow in faith and grow in your grace and walk in your love and walk in your power and bear much fruit for your glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, God bless you and I'll be seeing you again tomorrow.